Fallout 3 has quite a few stories to tell. Many of them take place in the Capital Wasteland. A few of them take place outside of it, but only one takes place in space. Can you beat Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC without taking any damage? Because there are no level requirements or recommendations for Fallout 3's DLCs, I started from the very beginning, named myself Alan, as in Alan the Alien, assumed the role of a perfectly normal human male, walked dead, spread out my special points amongst everything besides endurance, birthday stuff, my dad's chin is big enough to land a plane on, and I did something incredible, something I've never done before. I picked energy weapons as one of my skills. I normally don't put any points into that skill, because it's worthless and anyone who uses energy weapons is also worthless. But science believes that light travels faster than a bullet in space, so I had to play it safe. Then I killed a bunch of people, escaped the vault, got my waypoint, and headed north. Normally, I would pretty much ignore everything else as I made my way towards the start of the DLC. This time, I decided that if there was anything along my path towards the north, it would be okay to stop and investigate. I'm going into this DLC at level 2. Having a few extra weapons wouldn't be the worst thing ever. Before long, I found a weird ship in the ground. I knew exactly what was coming, but it still hurt on an emotional level that I couldn't see what items that body had. I'll tell my grandchildren of this day. I'll fight back the tears as I fill their ears with the tales of the corpse that got away. I set my max health to 1 so that any damage of any kind will kill me, and got caught in a tornado. It was a shade of blue, so it might have been a hurricane. The strabismus I had surgically corrected many years ago returned like a phoenix, like a, a, a big burning Thomas the Tank Engine. I briefly woke up to see these green guys talking about me as if I wasn't even there. That was very rude of them. Then Mr. Prickly stuck his finger in my eye socket, and the world was white. This was payback for making fun of blind people a few videos ago. It wasn't about poking and prodding around my insides, or about experimenting on me, or having mechanical slugs crawling into my body through my belly button. It was about making me see what the blind people see, so I could understand the error of my ways. Of course, I made no mistakes ever in my life. I knew this to be 100% correct because my vision returned. A crybaby got chosen by the claw, was carried off to who knows where, and Soma had an idea. A very bad idea. I'm a good noodle, but I don't deal well with pain or being punched by women. Her plan is that we pretend to fight long enough for the green midgets to be sent in to stop all the ruckus. Then we rip their arms off and beat them to death with their limbs. Can you see what the problem is here? I learned mighty quick that her fist was enough to kill me, which is good, it's a sign I can't take damage, but this is a confined space. That's why it's a holding cell. Thankfully, without the confines of clothing, I was able to avoid her blows long enough for the aliens to come into the cell with their pleasure devices. Soma distracted them while I used my hands as weapons. With my freedom finally restored, I killed the Rivet City security guard and began exploring the area in search of a way out. I might be free, but I'm not really free. I did find an Enclave officer and don his outfit. The healing archway did nothing because doctors are a sham, illnesses don't exist, and I realized something about this DLC. It's similar to Operation Anchorage. There are many objects that you can't interact with at all. They're fixed in place unlike a lot of the items, scrap metal, various household cleaners, toy cars, etc. from the base game. This Sally character spoke to me through the static, and in her weird voice that doesn't match her face, she told me that she could help guide me through the ship. It was smart of Bethesda to include a child as the guide person, since children can't die in Bethesda games. To get her out of the cell, I had to deactivate this coolant tower thing, which is actually kind of annoying because of how long it takes. Sally has a mustache, sort of. I killed another alien with the shock baton, got all my equipment back, as well as some plasma-based weaponry, put on the Enclave armor to disguise myself amongst the aliens, and entered the steamworks. I figured my best bet would be the 10mm pistol, because it has 10 in its name, and 10 is a pretty big number. Yeah, it was shit. I swapped it out for a shock baton, and the aliens never stood a chance. Sneak attacks and rapidly firing shots downed a few more up ahead. Generally speaking, killing someone before they have a chance to react is the best way to avoid being rendered dead by them. Then I got the alien atomizer. This thing does 24 damage per shot. Not bad, but the good thing is that it is 100% accurate. Wherever your crosshair is aimed is where it will go. For the majority of the aliens, it's a one-shot kill. My energy weapon skill makes energy weapons more potent, which results in the atomizer dealing a lot of damage. Nevertheless, I pressed onward. That word didn't fit there. 
Something exploded, that probably wasn't my fault, and I began using the disintegrator instead. It does far more damage, but I learned right now actually, that it wasn't enough to one-shot everything. The speed of the aliens is something that would be a recurring problem throughout my spacefaring adventures. I got hit by the dreaded white mist and died. At least that's what I thought. Turned out some rascal shot me from behind like some sort of a common dandy. I made them pay for that by killing all the alien workers I found. Stupid voice Sally informed me some time ago that they were innocent and don't pose a threat. I disagree. They were rather loud and obnoxious when they were fleeing from me. That was annoying, so death is deserved. I'll be honest, a lot of this DLC is not very difficult. Many of the enemies can die in one shot regardless of whether you're hidden or not. It doesn't really help that I'm a notorious save order. If I'm not saving so often that the game effectively becomes a Windows Movie Maker slideshow, I'm not saving often enough. I should probably start implementing some sort of an honor-based checkpoint system. Or I could just up the difficulty as to not be a giant bitch. Past me will consider it and discuss it with future me to hopefully get current me to do something about it. Sally came out of hiding after most of the aliens were dead. This tentacle TV dinner thing disgusted me. I took out a turret and I entered the engineering core. I was so damn curious here that I suspended the challenge for a bit to explore the galaxy. It's amazing that this is what stars look like when you get close to them. Back in the real world, Sally told me that the teleporter was offline. Can you guess who has to fix it? Eat your heart out, Bob the Builder. I got this one. Sally then introduced me to her frozen friends. Much like the people I went to high school with, they were very much alive but wouldn't interact with me in any way. I listened to all their recordings, then thawed them bitches out. Colonel Hardigan proved his name is a lie when he chose death over talking to me. He had no heart after all. So I stripped him naked, talked to Elliot whose face bothered me for some reason, talked to the samurai, talked to Red Dead Redemption, and Sally told me that there were three more generators that must be destroyed before I can venture out into the vacuum cleaner of space. The cryo lab was first, because I before C except after P. The cryo lab was big and foggy and ominous. It's almost like I'm on board an alien ship or something. This is where they hold the abductees and prepare them for all sorts of fun experiments. Raiders and feral ghouls were here, emphasis on were because they're dead. They even had a room where every living creature could be turned into an icicle. The ground got increasingly misty as I got closer to the generator. I also unleashed the all-powerful nothing on all the aliens in the area. Super mutants were captured and held somewhere. I pressed a button to let them loose but I never saw them until they were dead. I eventually found the generator, activated the coolant switches, went on an adventure to see how many limbs the explosion would blast off, was pretty disappointed by the result, slowed down time briefly to see this alien thing fire in slow motion, and went back to the central hub where an alien was being held against its will. Paulson killed it, so I killed him and became more Paul than I've ever been before. I also noticed that my mouth opens when I fire the Paul gun. Something told me Wild West would become useful in the future, so I reloaded a save, let him live, and went to the hangar to find the next generator. Moments after I arrived, a spaceship showed up. It was quite concerning. It just sat there, menacingly. I saw the space down below the ship and tried to explore it. Died, and went 110% floppy. The few aliens in the area were cleared out, and I dropped a gun down the hole to see what would happen. It was amazing. It flew around like nothing I'd ever seen. If a small toy ricocheted like something that didn't care about gravity, just imagine what a corpse would do. So I killed an alien and dragged its fat ass all the way to the opening and dropped it in. It was everything I hoped it would be, dancing on the borders of gravity, but it wasn't enough. I needed more. The challenge was temporarily suspended again to allow me to become Jesus just for a moment. I walked out over the opening and dropped every object I had. All my junk, armor, and weapons. Dozens of items, all suspended in the air, waiting for their moment to shine. I hit the switch to turn on reality and watched my babies drop into the abyss. It was truly one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. The spectacle was so amazing that I had to join in myself. Then I thought I had a way to take it to the next level. Slip got a couple bucks to make him slow down time enough that I might be able to comprehend what I was witnessing. But it was too much. My brain couldn't handle it, and I died. That or one of the objects flying around bounced off the back of my head and killed me. After all that excitement, it was time to get serious. An entire army's worth of aliens showed up, most likely out of that ship I had disrespected earlier. To say that this was the most challenging part of the entire playthrough would be an understatement. No it wouldn't, would it? No, yeah, that's right. 
I didn't even attempt to count how many aliens I killed. Not only did I die so many times that keeping track would be a nightmare, I can't even count that high. I started getting confused once I got to three or four. The aliens seem to be more accurate with their semi-automatics than most human enemies are down on what's left of Earth. Their weapons are slower than ballistic weapons, but the shots are much more visible, which always made me think I could dodge their shots. They were fast enough to make that not really possible, which was rather frustrating. I got momentarily stuck in this small room when several aliens and a drone all bum-rushed me. I managed to get the best of them in my last attempt, finished clearing out all the aliens who were encroaching on my land, and got myself a new gun. A drone cannon. It's like a grenade launcher, drill, nerf ball blaster sort of thing. With the second generator destroyed, I passed through the hub and entered the robotic assembly area. Something about the name made me think that this was where the robots were being assembled. I used the electro drill here for a while. It might not be the most effective, but it's a fun gun to use since ammo is so plentiful. I had some trouble in this section. The enemy drones are using my weapon that I stole from them against me. It has an area of effect, which means it doesn't have to hit you directly to kill you. It was all worth it when I shot one of their shots out of the air with my own. Turrets are annoying too. They blend in with the rest of the environment incredibly well. With everything dead, I ran into a problem. What you're supposed to do is overload the assembly line. It blows up and creates an opening, allowing you to get to the third generator. But it explodes real quick, and you don't have enough time to get far enough away to avoid the blast which, of course, does enough damage to kill you. I would later learn that you can get Soma, who knows how to repair stuff, to accompany you into the robotic assembly. But if the area is already cleared out, she'll simply tell you that you handled it just fine without her, and that she has no reason to go inside. There's no way to blow open the wall without taking damage, so you're effectively stuck. Or are you? See, you're supposed to blow it up to get to the other side. But all you really need to do is get to the generator. There's no objective stating that the assembly line has to be blown up. I called upon an old friend, speed running, to save the day. You can quick save and quick load into any object to clip through it. The difficulty varies widely depending on what you're trying to clip through, but my understanding is that it can work on anything with enough time and effort. Once I got inside, I tried to blow up the assembly line from within the assembly line. It killed me, so I ignored it, found the last generator, did what had to be done, took the teleporter back to the main room, and was on to bigger and better things. My objective is, and has always been, getting to the upper level of the ship. Even when I was a two-year-old, shitting myself at three o'clock in the morning, that was my goal. I put on the space suit and opened the door to the decompression chamber, activated the switch, then took off the suit because I had to know what would happen if I decompressed without the suit. I died. Who would have guessed that that's what would have happened? I left the suit on the second time, the door opened, and nothing seemed to change. Odd. I then opened the door to the spacewalk. I was in space, and it barely felt like space. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but this wasn't it. Falling off the ship, and my fingers failing to grasp at anything as I lost all hope and floated out towards the infinite nothing was nice though. The teleporter was offline because a few panels were exposed. All it took was me ground pounding them with my imagination, and I was able to get to the upper level of the ship. I took off my suit, and my head exploded again. I ran into a small issue where I was over encumbered, and every time I opened my pit boy to drop something, my skull would pinata itself and turn into all sorts of candy on the floor. Eventually, it solved itself when I waddled to the next area. Sally and Soma arrived, went back through the teleporter, and I was stuck again. They blinked out of existence when they went through the orange pad. Waiting did nothing, quitting the game and relaunching it did nothing. Sally was supposed to crawl through this gap and unlock the door. What eventually fixed it was loading an earlier save. This time she did her fucking job and unlocked the door. The gang and I arrived at this observation room where the aliens likely screen peeked. That's how they knew where to find me. Ignore the fact that it was I who found them. There was some noise and something probably happened. I was distracted and missed it. Upside is, Sally opened the next door. But now it falls on me to disable the death ray. And Sally told me that the aliens are getting mad. This is getting better and better. The lighting in the ship was so bad that I thought the textures on my shirt and pants had ran away like a frightened animal. I had to brute force my way through a multitude of different areas to get to the death ray. First up was the weapons lab, not to be confused with the weapons slab, which is something else entirely. Nothing terrible happened in there. 
The experimentation lab was fun though. It was here a bunch of innocent aliens tried and failed to escape my wrath. But more importantly, I met abominations here. They're fun. They're kinda like what I would imagine myself to look like if I didn't know what I looked like and thought of something horrible based on my voice alone. The biological research center is the more family-friendly version of the experimentation lab. I didn't really poke around in there all that much. I wasn't very interested in killing any more of my genderless brothers and sisters in spirit than I had to. Sally and the others arrived, and I took orders from a small child again. I also primed a door to explode whenever something got near it, then got near it and died. One alien died under mysterious circumstances, so I dragged his body through the red light revival machine in hopes of waking him up. When that failed, I removed his head, and before long, I arrived at the death ray. Destroying it was more complicated than I would have thought. In fact, it was so complicated that in the process of disabling it, I accidentally shot Earth with the death ray a few times, and maybe once on purpose. Getting it offline was basically just more of the same. There are four generators that need to be destroyed, just like all the others I've dealt with. A few aliens raided the room in an attempt to stop me. They succeeded more than once. The next time around, I spawn killed them all. The last generator was destroyed. The death ray was more flaccid than anyone could have imagined. And all that remained was reaching the bridge of the alien ship. That was more difficult than I thought it would be. Mostly because there's a couple aliens and two turrets all shooting in a very small space. Making it likely that they'll all hit their target. Me. My prostate examination device made quick work of them all. Something new they had here were these weird static ball things. They were similar to the static fields blocking doorways earlier, but now they're in a ball shape. I fought through more aliens, all of which were in their living quarters. Kinda felt like I was doing something bad. It felt like what I was doing was wrong, but I wasn't gonna let that, like, stop me or anything. Eventually, I arrived at the bridge, where I killed the captain and most of his remaining crew members with relative ease. It felt too easy. Then came the epic space battle, the Mass Effect 3 of Fallout 3's fifth DLC. I've never played Mass Effect, but I would assume it's basically this. This was anticlimactic. All I had to do was stand there and push a button every time it lit up. Aliens tried a few times to get into the room, but Red Dead and Elliot took care of them. Tashiro helped some too after he finally bothered to show up. I died once or twice to the aliens raiding the room, but pretty much all I did was press a button. You would have to be shockingly inept at video games to not be able to destroy that other ship. With the final push of the button, the death ray that I could have sworn I'd just destroyed blasted the enemy ship, and the Zaydans that had lived peacefully above our planet for generations were no more. The last main quest of the DLC was finished. The run was effectively over, but I wasn't done. There was something I wanted to find out. This is like the fifth time I've paused the challenge. I reloaded a save to just before I finished off the other ship, then ignored their shots to see what would happen if they won that epic fight for the future of mankind. I die, that's what happens but it's just an explosion at my feet. That's it. The ship doesn't explode. Nobody else dies. It's like I dropped a grenade at my feet or something. I went ahead and enabled God Mode to let them fire many more times, hoping that something else would happen. I let it go for a couple minutes, but nothing else happened. Soma did die because she was so close to where their blast lands. That was it though. So I disabled God Mode, reloaded a save to after they were destroyed, teleported myself back down to Earth, and beat Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC without taking any damage. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description that 100% works. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Good luck in World War III.